Did you hear about the frog who became a chef? He was a master at French croaking. Now, isn't that riveting? Today we're diving into a culinary adventure that's as vibrant as it is daring. I'm talking about the ever-intriguing poison dart frogs. Yes, you heard it right. These little guys are not just known for their radiant colors and potent toxins, but they also make for a surprisingly hearty stew. Imagine this, a colorful bowl of stew with hues borrowed from the very frogs that lend it its unique flavor. You might be thinking, well, that's one way to add a splash of color to your diet. Indeed, it's a feast for both the eyes and the palate. And don't worry, we're not planning to turn anyone into a prince or princess today, or are we? Only one way to find out. Now, let's hop right into the process, shall we? First things first, you've got to catch your dinner. Now, don't worry, we aren't suggesting you book a flight to the Amazon. Now, imagine this, you're in your kitchen garden. The sun is setting, casting long, dramatic shadows. You're on a wild hunt and your prey, the elusive poison dart frog. Now these little buggers aren't your average garden frogs. They're small, vibrant, and they've got a name that would make any self-respecting Bond villain envious. These frogs get their names from the indigenous people of Central and South America, who would use their toxic secretions to poison the tips of their blow darts. Clever, right? But don't worry. We're not going to be doing any of that. Our mission is simply to catch one. So, how do you catch a poison dart frog, you ask? Well, it's a bit like trying to catch a slippery bar of soap in the bath. These critters are agile and quick, hopping about with all the enthusiasm of a caffeinated kangaroo. Now you might be thinking, but wait, aren't these frogs poisonous? Well, yes and no. You see, in the wild, diet is everything. These frogs derive their toxicity from their diet of ants, beetles, and mites. However, when kept in captivity and fed a non-toxic diet, over time they lose their toxicity. So, hypothetically, if you were to catch one in your kitchen garden, it would probably be as harmless as a goldfish. But let's get back to our imaginary hunt. To catch one, you'd need quick reflexes and a keen eye. And remember, no sudden movements. You wouldn't want to scare away your dinner now, would you? Remember folks, we're just having a bit of fun here. Please don't actually try to catch poison dart frogs at home. After all, we wouldn't want you to end up with a garden full of colorful hoppy escapees now, would we? All right, you've caught your frog, hypothetically. Now, on to the cleaning. So, you've managed to get your hands on this little brightly colored hopper. Good on you. But before we go any further, let's have a moment of silence for our amphibious friend here. All right, that's enough. Now, when it comes to cleaning a poison dart frog, it's not a task for the faint-hearted. Remember, this little fella has gotten its name for a reason. It's not called a cuddly bunny frog, is it? No, it's a poison dart frog, and that means it's got poison glands that need careful handling. So, what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers, a steady hand, and a sense of humor because this is where things get a bit, let's say, dicey. You see, these poison glands are usually located in the skin of the frog, especially around the head and back area. So you've got to remove them with the same precision a surgeon would use while performing open-heart surgery. Except in this case, the heart is a poison gland, and the patient, well, let's just say he's not going to thank you later. Now you might be thinking, what if I accidentally ingest the poison? Well, let me put it this way, if you thought your last hangover was bad, this would be like a hangover but with a free trip to the ER. So, let's try to avoid that, shall we? After you've removed all the poison glands, give your frog a good rinse. Make sure it's squeaky clean, because no one likes a gritty stew. And voila, you have a clean, poison-free frog, ready to be transformed into a hearty stew. Just remember, this is all hypothetical, folks. We're not suggesting you go out and start catching poison dart frogs, but if you find yourself in a survival situation, or just want to impress your mates with your frog cleaning prowess. Now you know how it's done. And there you have it, a clean, poison-free frog ready for cooking. Now, this is where the magic happens. Time to turn our little amphibian friend into a hearty stew. First things first, let's fire up that stove, shall we? The frog, with its vibrant hues, is about to take a hot bath in a pot brimming with a medley of fresh veggies. Imagine, if you will, a chorus of onions, carrots, and potatoes singing in harmony as they dance around our star of the show. And here comes the broth, gushing in like a waterfall, submerging our froggy friend in its warm embrace. The pot now simmers, 
the heat flirting with the ingredients, coaxing out their flavors. The air fills with an aroma that would make a Michelin star chef question his career choices. Now we're not just tossing the frog in willy-nilly, oh no. This is a symphony of flavors, a culinary ballet if you will. Each ingredient enters the pot at the perfect moment, playing its part to perfection. A dash of salt here, a sprinkle of pepper there, and voila. The stew bubbles and brews, each bubble bursting with flavor, each stir blending the ingredients into a harmonious melody. As the stew thickens, the frog, once a toxic little hopper, is now a succulent tender morsel bathing in a pool of hearty goodness. The transformation is as mesmerizing as a tadpole morphing into a frog, only far more delicious. Your frog stew is ready to leap right into your stomach. Now, what's a good meal without a glass of wine, right? To truly savor our vibrant poison dart frog stew, I recommend a zesty Sauvignon Blanc. Why, you ask? Well, it's got the acidity to balance the richness of our stew, and it's as bright and lively as our little amphibian friends. Just remember, unlike the frogs, the wine isn't poisonous. And there you have it, folks. A hearty meal that is as adventurous as it is delicious. Woo! Well, that's it for today's culinary adventure, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this wild ride as much as I have. Now, I know not everyone has a poison dart frog handy in their backyard, but hey, Cooking is all about creativity, isn't it? So feel free to swap out the frog for chicken or tofu and you'll still have a delicious stew to savor. And if you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this with your friends. It's the best way to keep these adventurous recipes coming. But that's not all. Stay tuned for our next video. I've got something really wild and wacky up my sleeve. You won't want to miss it. Until next time, keep hopping into flavor, my friends. Before we wrap up, we have a quick request from us to you. If you've enjoyed this froggy culinary adventure and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps us out. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button too. We've got plenty more wild and wacky recipes coming your way that you won't want to miss. Also, if you know someone who might get a kick out of this, why not share this video with them? We're sure they'd appreciate it. Your support means the world to us and it's what keeps us going. Thanks for hopping along with us today.